Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Richard Metal Fan Interviews. This is episode number 52. And today's guest, we're talking to none other than one of my favorite bands ever, ever and one of my favorites in the black metal genre. And I had the honor and the privilege yesterday to speak with Lord Araman of the Almighty Dark Funeral. Pretty much talked to him about like his journey for music from where he starts now. Pretty much went through the albums as well as talked about their latest album, We Are the Apocalypse, which came out a week or two ago through Century Media Records. Um, and it was a really great conversation. Sure, and it was a little bit different this time around because I was yesterday I was was going to a show, so I had to meet up at their place. So and I had some slight technical issues, but uh, well, at least managed to sort it out and it worked out, out fine from there. So without further ado, enjoy this interview with Lord Armand. So what's up, guys? I have the honor and the privilege to speak with one of my favorite bands ever, Lord Armand of the Almighty Dark Funeral. How are you doing today, man? Oh, thank you for that uh, in, in introduction, but uh, I'm doing all right. That's good to hear. So basically, this format is I want to do a quick rundown of your catalog and as well talk about the new album. So before we go into that, let's just dive right back into the beginning. What were the first bands that got you into metal and what made you want to start playing guitar? Uh, I think the first band got a must have been Black Sabbath uh, in, uh, in the mid 70s or late 70s. Uh, and it was really there was really never any band that made me want to start playing guitar. Uh, you know, I come from a somewhat, somewhat musical family, so instruments of different kind have always been close to me, uh, including guitars. But, you know, when your parents tell tells you, hey, pick up the guitar and, and play some, then you naturally don't want to do it, or at least me. Right. And it's not, not, not interesting. So, so I, I, you know, when, when I grew up, I played uh, a lot of other different kind of uh, instruments. Right. I've always been playing instruments, but uh, uh, it, you know, it took a while until I, you know, felt comfortable to go back and, and start playing guitar on my own own terms. You know, when I was ready, that took a while. All right, and uh, were you? In Sorry, you're saying? Yeah, and there was really not any band really that. That they influenced me, you know, I had never, you know, when I started playing guitar, it was just for fun. Uh, I never had any intention to start a band or something like that. But, you know, when I finally started playing guitar, everything went quite fast. So it didn't take too long until I started my first band anyway. So, All right. And were you in any bands before starting up Dark Funeral? Yeah. My first band was called Satan's Disciple. Hell of a name. Uh, uh, and that, that was, uh, you know, in the 89, 90, 91, uh, when I lived up in, in the north part of Sweden where I grew up. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's where I started. That, right. that was my first real band. All right. And how did Dark Funeral form? Because you all formed it in 93 in Stockholm. Yeah. Well, we actually start, started to make some pre-formation in 91 already. Uh, but at that time, we were called Ariman. I, mo I moved from... Uh, my hometown is called Luleå, which is up in the north part of Sweden. And I moved to Stockholm in 90... Uh, you know, in the spring 91. Uh, with the intention to, to you know, find the... You know, band members to start a new band in, in the big city. Uh, and already at that time, I, you know... I went by the name Ariman, so... Uh, so that, that was the band I wanted, you know, at that, you know, in 91, there was, I guess it was kind of, you know, a trend to, to, you know, call your band for your, for, for your own name, basically. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was lots of smaller demo bands who were going, you know, it was their solo band in some, some ways, I guess. So, and I didn't have any better name, you know. This was just very early, you know, when I, when I start looking for, for members. Uh, so I, I did some, uh, you know, auditions with some drummers. And, and uh, until I, I later ran into to Blackmon, uh, who had heard what I was, uh, you know, looking for. Or even before that, uh, there, there was actually some talk, you know, I was, at that time, I was hanging out a lot with, 
Uh, Lars Rosenberg from from the original uh, Entombed lineup, you know the basis, uh, and also uh, another guy. And it, you know there was was talk that maybe they would join or not, but uh, it never happened. Uh, and then I you know ran into Blackburn and he heard, he heard what I was you know trying to start up. All right. And uh, it, you know he was like yeah. I'm definitely into, you know, making something more extreme than what I do in, you know, necrophobic at that time. Nice. And so, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, then we start, uh, you know, planning the band together, basically, and, and start looking for for members. All right. And then that, that first EP that came out in 94, it's re- really sick. T- tell me about, like, that whole recording process. Like, where did y'all record it at? Uh we recorded it with uh, Don Svana uh, at Unison Studios in, in Finspång uh, over a weekend. And uh, yeah, you know, when we had found the, the, you know, the first formation of the band featured another drummer, uh, Nico, who before played, actually played with Damon and Mars uh, and some mm-hmm. other a band called Scum, which was a grindcore band at that time, where where actually even Demogross came from. Uh, so that that was the first formation. Me, Blackbone, Nico, and and Demogross. Uh, and, and at that time we were called Ariman. Uh, but later I felt like oh, we, I, I didn't feel comfortable, you know, you know, now it was a real band, and I was like, "We can't go after my name. We need to find a, you know, good name that fits the music." Uh, and then Blackman and I came up with uh, with the name Dark Fiona one day when we were sitting in in, in the sofa at my place. Yeah. Uh, and and from there, you know, it didn't work out with Nico, so we ran into Draugen. Uh, so he came in. Uh, uh, but he made clear all the, already from the beginning. I will join the band until we recorded uh, we record the mini CD, and after that I'm I'm gone. Uh, so that that was the plan from the from the beginning because he was doing his other band called Ilska and and some other black metal bands at that time. All right, and then tell me about that the debut album, The Secret of the Black Arts. I think it's, in my opinion, one of the best albums in the black metal metal uh, category genre. Which I put it up there with, like, uh, at the heart of Winter by Immortal or Nightside Eclipse or Day Mysterious Dom Satanus. Just tell me about that. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, when you are young, hungry, trying to, you know, uh, you know, find a new way to, you know, how you can portray the the black you know bring in something new to the black metal scene <laughs> something more darker more extreme uh, and then you know just managed to get some really good good people together in, in a band and that's you know then you can create magic uh, yeah we, I mean for us it was just something we did we we had we did we you know we didn't expect you know it was going to become so big as it became at that time, you know. Right, uh, and, yeah, yeah. And then moving on to the next album, Vova Scum Satanus. Like, like, of course, with the debut, like you have your whole entire career to write it. But with the second album, there's like a lot of like hype and pressure. Did you feel pressure to follow up Secret of the Black Arts? Uh, no, uh, because already before we entered the studio to record at record. You know the chemistry within the band wasn't that good, so, and I, and I I had my my vision where I wanted to go with, with music myself, uh, so when everything you know when the lineup pretty much fell apart, uh, you know I was consistent and like I will continue you know on my path and uh, what I have in mind for uh, for the music to bring this even further. Uh, of course, there was a lot of you know bullshit going on at that time, and and I was like, well, there's only one way to do this, and uh, I just got to show the world what I'm you know done about you know when I'm myself, you know left uh, left from the original lineup. Uh, right. So yeah, and I just you know 
you know, people can talk, but I felt like I'm not going to talk. I just can do it uh, and follow my heart and, and see where it takes me. Uh, and then I managed to get this really good lineup together. I had Typhus uh, on the other guitar. And uh, yeah, we, we wrote some really killer riff together and uh, you know, it became Vobiscum Satanas. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, yeah, that's just a fucking groundbreaking record, I guess. Oh, yeah. And then I know you did like a little little EP called Teach Children to Worship Satan. And I love that. And you all did like covers. Like what made you all decide to like, like put do covers on that? Well, at that time we had been, we had been offered by uh, a lot of, uh, you know, record companies. They, they wanted, wanted us to, you know, participate in a lot of cover albums. And uh, we kind of went through all the offers and, and it took a while until we felt like it, it was going to be something good for us to do. But then we saw the challenge in doing it, you know, our way uh, to show also to show tribute to some bands that have been something for us uh, that we also liked, you know, all of us liked. We were like, yeah, maybe it's not such a bad idea. So we, we picked out four, uh, four artists and, uh, and then four songs and then start, you know, trying to make our own versions of them. Yeah, and you did a great uh, job with that. Oh, thanks. It was, uh, you know, it was, I was kind of skeptical if, if it would be allowed to even uh, try, uh, try, you know, some King Diamond stuff, but but I think the way we built up the whole uh, song as a kind of uh, uh, role game with the vocals and stuff, you know, uh, made more made it more theatrical. Of course, King Diamond is very theatrical, but in our way, uh, I think that um, uh, gave that song actually is, uh, an honest, uh, you know, justice. And talking about that, I talked to Mike Weird just uh, like an hour ago. I, I never heard it, what they think about it. I got to fucking ask him. I will do yeah. that tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to send him it. Yeah. Yeah, I talked, I talked to him just before I went on onto the internet today. Uh, but I, I never heard what, what they think of the cover we did. Yeah. And then moving on to the next album, Diabolus and Turret. Um, um, I love it. And I know last year it was the 20 year anniversary of that. Like, how do you think you guys have evolved from Diabolus to, of course, the, the latest album? Well, I think we, we follow a pretty fixed course. You know, we, we got our sound. Uh, I got my way of writing and uh, just trying to, you know, impress ourselves for every song and every album we, we write. Uh, but of course, you know, some records just make a bigger impact, you know, at a, at a certain time than others. Uh, but I think the Abolus Interium, that was the rec that, that was a really groundbreaking record for us. That that was the record that really lifted us as a band to the next level. Uh, and I think we managed, that was the first record we really managed to bring in bring the extremity, you know, uh, to new, new, uh, new height, but still bring in even more me melodic side to the, to the music. It's, you know, kind of makes the, the best of two worlds. Yeah, totally. And, uh, and that, that's, that's the way my, my, my songwriting have developed over the years. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I love writing those intense uh, songs. They just keep chasing you, you know, uh, and never let let you breathe. Uh, but I, but I'm, you know, for for the new record, I tried, you know, I worked more with dynamics and, and things like that, and also with more groovy parts. Uh, so, but I'm still trying to, you know, just Im improve you know, all the things that I like with when I write music. Right. And kind of like breaking away from Dark Funeral. <laughs> I know in 2002, you did a thing called Wolven Society with Conquer Divine. I, I, tell me about that, because I don't think really nobody talks about that. Uh, no, it, it never became anything, really. Uh, I mean, it, it was, uh, you know, I, I hardly ever do any side projects. I, I've participated in a few, in a few things. 
Um, but this was, I think, the, the whole lineup that was planned for this uh, uh, was really interesting. You know, me coming from the black metal scene, uh, Vincent coming from the death metal, satanic death metal scene, and then, uh, the, uh, you know, Kyle also from the, the US death metal scene from Incantation, and then two guys from Electric Hellfire Club, which is more in the industrial. Uh, and, and the connection with uh, especially Vincent and the Hellfire guys are, uh, they were really uh, close friends with uh, Anson Sandal LaVey of Church of Satan, which I had a good contact with also over the years. That, that's what kind of got us together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you mentioned Aturatos uh, Sanctus. That's another great album. Yeah. No, but with uh, Wolven Society, you know, I just felt it was interesting, you know, getting together with some people from different kind of extreme satanic music styles and see what kind of stuff we can create together. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and do you yeah. think with working with uh, Wolven Society, maybe brought some new elements to Dark Funeral with Aturatos Sanctus? Uh, nothing that I can think of like that, but uh, maybe unconsciously, I don't know. I mean, everything, uh, you know, when you do some kind of musical works, is influencing in one way or another, but maybe not consciously. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't say anything that in particular was inspiring. I mean, it was inspiring for me as a musician uh, and as a guitarist. To, to play something completely different from what I normally do. I mean, yeah. I, I'm used to, you know, I, I play and write my own music. I don't play much covers. I'm not one of those guys who like to jam with other guys and, and stuff like that, you know. Right. Uh, it's like it's like I write and I play with, when I have a purpose. That's about it. All right. And then going forward to, to Angelus Exuro Pro X. I had to practice that for a, for a week. Wait, I, what was that like going from a church to a sanctus to the, the next one? No, it was just a nat natural progression. I didn't really, between those records, I never really, or maybe, but nothing I can recall at the moment. I didn't really have any plans of where I wanted to go, go you know, bring the music. I just followed my, my you know, inner demons and, and my my spirit and, and that's where it brought me uh, for the last couple of records I've been analyzing things a little bit deeper uh, what I want to say with the music where I want to go, how I want to improve it and stuff like that that's stuff that I think more about these days than I did earlier uh, uh, yeah I, I, I go a little bit deeper nowadays than I did before I just went with the flow, basically. All right. And then, of course, the last album where Shadows Forever Rain. I love that album. That was pretty much my introduction to Dark Funeral well, at the time. And I know it was also the first album with your current vocalist, Hello Martyr. How would you find him? Uh, uh, the, the whole, the, you know, we, we, were, we were planning a 20th anniversary show here in Stockholm. And... Uh, there was a lot of bands who applied to open up for that show. And uh, we were thinking, you know, we had two sh choices that we were discussing. Either we bring in an old school black metal band that came from the same period as, as Dark Funeral, or we give the slot to a newer band that we feel like deserved attention. And then the more we talked about it, uh, we came up with like, Maybe it's better to, you know, we we keep the old school, you know, the old generation by, with our funeral and then let the younger, newer band get some attention they deserve. And yeah. uh, out of all the band that uh, applied for, for that opening slot, uh, we felt that Gra was a really good choice. And it was for many reasons. Uh, uh, and then I, I met up with Helia Mother uh, to discuss it even, you know, a little bit more. And uh, it was kind of interesting because 
he also comes from the north part of Sweden, even higher up than I do. But ironically, it shows that he had be, been working in Luleå with uh, the guitarist of my first band, Satan's Disciples. So they had been working at the theater as uh, sound engineers and stuff like that. Uh, and that, you know, sometimes you feel like the world is kind of small. Uh, but we kind of, you know, kind of felt that connection, you know, both coming from the north part of Sweden, you have, you have this a little bit different way of, of dealing with things than, and than people from the south or from Stockholm where we, where we live now. And uh, yeah, so Gro, Gra, his band Gra opened up for us that, that night. And I think just a, a few days after he sent me an email and was like, hey man, I know you guys are looking for a vocalist. I'm your vocalist, just so you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty, pretty awesome. I was like, yeah, yeah, why don't you come and uh, give it a try? Nice. So we, we, we did some additions and uh, yeah, he just impressed uh, all of us <laughs> really well. So, uh, so we just kept on, you know, practicing, working together, uh, improving, you know, bringing him into the band and, and then just, you know, let him grow into the band All right. in a natural way and uh, it you know it worked out really good all right all right when he joined the band did he have him listen to like previous dark funeral albums and be like this is what you need to do or did you wanted him to like bring his own mix to the band well he, he had been a fan of the band for i don't know since, since the beginning basically oh, wow. uh the, i mean I think all of us that very clear. We don't want a new Caligula, you know. You're a new vocalist. You're gonna fucking put on your own shoes and show 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 what you are about. Uh, the only thing that uh, I guess we talked about, I really like the way you know his voice from the beginning. But uh, of course, he, he improved a lot uh, by the time we were rehearsing and trying to, you know, he, he was. I guess he was trying to adjust himself and find found his way uh, to incorporate his vocals in, into Dark Funeral. Uh, but the only, the only thing I, I, you know, I was uh, uh, telling him that uh, for me it's uh, really important that if you can improve the articulation when you sing, then I would be really happy because I, I feel like, you know, I want extreme vocals, like metal vocals, but I also want want, want uh, the vocalist to, to articulate the words so people actually can hear what you're singing. Right. Uh, and uh, I mean, he, he, he was really doing it really good already from start. But I said, that's maybe something you can work on and see if, if you can improve it even further. And uh, he did. And uh, I think he just, you know, he's just becoming better and better. And uh, for, for the new record, he fucking impressed all of us a lot. Uh, that he even, you know, brought the, the vocal range even further. And uh, yeah, he's, he's just a great vocalist, very dedicated, hardworking, and that's the way it's got to be. Yeah, and I agree. And then the new album, We Are the Apocalypse, I just think it's, I've heard, it's only been up for like a week week now, and I think it's absolutely kick-ass. Just like, what's like that whole writing and recording process like for it? Well, it was pretty much like the last one. Me and Helen, I was working in, you know, he, he in his home studio, me in my home studio, and then, you know, sharing files, discussing a little bit here and there. And then, yeah, just taking step by step. Some days things were happening some days nothing happened and you know uh but that's just you know how it is to to be a songwriter you know yeah you gotta be in the right mood to, to write music but i think we we have found a way really easy and good way to work together yeah uh, so uh yeah it just feels very natural and, and nothing pushed or anything it just you know it just go very easy Right, and would you consider uh, this? Sorry, you're saying. Yeah, and I think uh, we I've mentioned it many times during the writing process, and I was like, uh, 
of course, we improved, you know, from, from the last uh, album to this, we improved a lot of ways uh, how we were. But uh, that's, you know, things you learn along the way, uh, which is also always interesting. Uh, but I think, you know, I mentioned many times to him, I said, dude, we, we really have found this a good way to work uh, work together and we really make a good team. Uh, uh, I really like, uh, like this working relationship. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's just a nat natural evolution. Like, this isn't just like a direct follow-up to where Shadows Forever Rain. I mean, I just think it's just the natural evolution in Dark Funeral. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, already after the last record, I had a pretty clear mind where I wanted to bring bring the music. And th that was to, to work more on the rhythmic side, uh, you know, um, improve the vocals even further, uh, make, you know, just... And, and also make the more music more dynamic. Uh, and there was a lot of things that, you know, came during the writing process that I kind of surprised myself too. Uh, you know, in, in a way I'm kind of primitive when I write, uh, but, uh, but I think, uh, you know, I'm more uh, confident now than perhaps before when I write music, you know. I don't really... You know, I never cared much for what other people think, of course, because then you can't do anything. But, but I think the more comfortable and, and, you know, I feel myself when I write music, the less I care what other may think of the music. So I, I kind of feel more free when I write these days. And I can also analyze and go deeper, uh, deeper into things uh, now than, than before. I mean, it feels really refreshing. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I'm also so so curious about, because I know you guys take a lot of time. You really do take your time to make your albums, because I know the last album came out in 2016, and before that was 2009, and then before that was 2005. With the making of each album, does it kind of like end differently than what you had that initial vision for? Uh, not really. Uh, of course, there's, there's, uh, as I said, there's uh, always you know new things that pops up that you didn't really had in mind when you start thinking about writing a new record. <clears throat> but uh, but you know I I just try to you know impress myself when I write. That's you know to challenge myself and. Uh, and then it's, it's all what kind of feel you get from the stuff you come up with. Uh, and some things can, of course, you know, the original idea you had for one part can end up in something totally different uh, way when it's uh, uh, finished, you know. Uh, but that, that's, 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 you know, one of the sides that, you know, interesting when, when you write music. Yeah. And when you do it with an open mind and let just, you know, just go with the flow and and, and just you know, be open minded with, with whatever you come up with, and don't get some. You know, in the early days, I, I could get kind of locked up in myself and like I can't do that or this or that because it's it's not right. But yes, I mean nowadays I say yes. I mean if it feels good, if it sounds good for you or for me, then. Of course, I can do it. All right. I'm my I'm my own judge of the role, you know. Right, right. But um, also one thing to know about kind of continuing on with like in the songwriting because I know it's like like your the, your style of music is very rhythmic but also very melodic at the same time. Is there like something that starts first that first before to lay, lay down the groundwork with when writing a song? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, like, like. Like, 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 is there like a usual like rhythm or a, like a tempo th thing thing, and then you just like build upon that when when creating the music? No, normally I start with like recording a lot of uh, clean guitar in my cell phone, just IDs. Then I start going through them, uh, start recording in my home studio, and uh, and see where what you know, you know what kind of world they end up in, and where I want to go with that. But it's on. Uh, it's uh, yeah. Most of the time, maybe it's uh, 
melodies that that just pops up first, and then I'll start building from there. But kind of, it's kind of weird because I remember both both the last record and this record. I was kind of you know when I start writing, I was like, hmm, this record doesn't feel like they're getting going to be as melodic as I want them to be. But that's you know that's that's. That was, that was just a feeling I had because when I listen to the, you know, <laughs> when I have the, the final result now, I know they are very melodic album, but still, you know, the aggressive uh, at the same time and very atmospheric. That That's, you know, the key ingredients that I'm working on when I write music. Totally. And one thing I, I love about your music, because I feel like it's very, your music is very conceptual. Do you usually like engage the listeners into what the music is about or do you try to leave it open to interpretation yeah i mean that's uh, i think it's up to the listeners to see what they in you know what the music brings you know in in which kind of world they, the music brings them in uh, i mean i i wouldn't like to force someone like this is what I had in mind when I wrote the music. This is how I want you to 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 see it. Right, and can somebody like? Of course, I, of yeah. course, I want people to understand it. But the, I mean, the feeling they get from it should be, I mean, it, it should be open, you know, for whatever, you know. But uh, but yeah, sometimes I, I can. Uh, can see that some people have completely misunderstood the music, uh, but I'm not spending any energy on trying to explain it for them because it's dead case. They won't get it anyway. So, uh, but uh, yeah, sometimes I, I I can feel a little bit misunderstood, but uh, that's just how it is. All right, and can somebody's like own interpretation of the music change like your your view on your own music in a way? Uh, no, but but uh, sometimes I feel it's it's interesting to to hear from others how they take on on the music because it's it's one thing when you're the songwriter what it means for you and things like that and and sometimes it's a very different thing what what the listeners uh, get from the music uh, and I think it's it's interesting to to hear different takes you know how, how they uh read the music i guess all right and going uh, into the you were saying yeah it, 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 I, I find that interesting and sometimes like uh you know i never thought about it but it's a really interesting point so sometimes as i said sometimes i feel like yeah they didn't get anything <laughs> so, <laughs> all right and kind of going into your your life live show is there like a similar energy to playing live as to recording or, doing, or they're almost kind of like two separate entities yeah it's different things you know it's uh you know when you go up on stage you you know the energy you get with the crowd is something it's impossible to get without them you know in whatever environment you are in uh, it's got to be there and then you know when you are with them with the crew with the crowd uh that chemistry, the energy you create together is something, something magical for sure. All right. All right. And of course, me being a fan, I've seen only seen Dark Funeral twice. I know I first saw you all in 2018 on that tour at Septic Flesh. And then 2019, you did that tour with uh, Bel Fagor, who are Incantation and Hate, which are almost kind of like those two tours are have almost have like different fan, different band styles. Like, like, do you ever notice like a different like crowd reaction depending on the tours that you're on? Uh, no, I think you know. I mean, it, it, those two last two tours in in the US. I mean, we we got such you know so amazing fucking response from the crowd every night. Uh, you know, but that that's what we do. We, I mean, we're there to impress the crowd, of course, and and give them a fucking amazing experience. Uh, you know. Uh, so you know, but uh, normally when we play, you know, I, I don't know if you know 
we we normally play just for our crowd who are familiar with us. But I mean, sometimes we accept playing festivals that we feel like ah, nobody fucking have ever heard of us that, that that's gonna go on that festival. But that's that's kind of interesting to to just go up and, and play our kind of extreme music for people who have maybe no clue. And then you can understand that yeah they fucking get totally into it they feel like it's something really special and uh, that gives you some that, that's why i like doing those uh, not too common shows for us you know i used to say that we go on an anime tour and give a black metal show uh, but it's been so many times when, when i've been so surprised by by people who who you feel like would probably not get into the music whatsoever, but they just love it and they, they feel it's just something totally amazing. Um, yeah, that, that's just something really cool. Well, cool. I have, so, this, yeah. I have this, you know, uh, for example, just one thing I remember is this guy who just by coincidence ended up uh, uh, at the show, and he's, he's a, I don't know. What you, what you call it in English, but like dance music, not not like disco dance, but you know, this foxtrot and that kind of music. He, he's that kind of musician uh, who plays for, for that kind of crowd. And he just stumbled, stumbled onto, you know, uh, a show we did. And, and then he wrote, he told me this story and he was like, never heard this kind of music before. But now I bought all of your fucking records and I love it. And he's still fucking emailing me sometimes. And uh, well, that, that's something that's that's really cool when you reach people that uh, that are far from what you you think that uh, will will get into what you're doing. All right. And and, I... and and also when they they understand it, sometimes they are better than than metal heads do. All right. And that, that's that, that's really interesting. All right. That's cool. So I got, I got two more questions for you. And I, I always love asking artists this because sometimes I would get a really, really long answer or I just get a short, short, short to the point answer. But kind of going back to the songwriting, how do you know when a song is done? Oh, uh, I, I keep it on loop for a couple of days. And, uh, and then I don't listen to it for a day or two and then I go back. Uh, if, if I still get the right flow from beginning to end, then it's done. Right. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, it takes, sometimes it takes a while. But uh, yeah, I, I, I really give it many days, you know, just have it on loop. And, and uh, yeah, if I connect the dots from the beginning in the end, if, if I, if I get those two dots correct in my head, then, I, then I'm satisfied. Awesome. And then the final question I want to ask you is coming from black me metal, metal, because when people say black metal, they obviously think, think Norway, but obviously you guys are from Sweden. And I know around the time in, in the early 90s, like other bands that are like from Sweden, like At the Gates and The Haunted, Dark Tranquility, they was also emerging, but I know also Marduk is from a, from Sweden as well. Well, was there like a black metal scene in Sweden that you felt a part of, or was it for the goal for Dark Funeral to get outside of Sweden to play in front of like different countries and different audiences? And how do you think like the Swedish black metal scene is different than as of course now? Well, the, the, the you know, already when I came down to, to Stockholm in 91, there was a small black metal scene here in Sweden, uh, but the death metal war were the big thing. Uh, so I, I remember, you know, you know, I, I was friend with most of the death metal bands here in Stockholm at that time. And, and when they heard me coming from the north, a new guy in town, and also a new guy, you know, trying to start up a black metal band and not a death metal band like everybody else were doing. Uh, I got some kind of you know, weird reactions and everybody was like, yeah, well, 
it's never going to be anything, you know, black metal sucks and, and things like that. And they couldn't really understand. Well, they understood that I was dead serious with it, but I guess they couldn't take it that it was actually going to become something about it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the Norwegian scene and the Swedish black metal scene, I mean, they, maybe the Norwegian scene was a little bit bigger, but I'm not sure really, but maybe. Uh, the, the, the one thing I've said all, always is like, you know, no, Norway got the, the big attention now when everything reached the news over there. There was a lot of things going on here in Sweden too, at the, at the same, very same time. But Sweden is such a big, bigger country and not so uh, religious as Norway. So those kind of things never got, the, you know, blown up in the, that big proportions like it did in Norway. So, so I would say that that's a little bit different. Uh, uh, but but the scene was still, you know, alive here in Sweden at, at the same time. I mean, Sweden were before, you know, Norwegian scene. We had Bathroom from 84 and we had Morbid and lots of other bands. So, yeah. So the Swedish black metal scene was still very early. Awesome. So uh, before we go, I just want to thank you for this interview. Is just anything else with the release of We Are the Apocalypse you would like to promote? And obviously just knocking on wood that tour... Tours are slowly coming back. I mean, it's happening again, but can we, when can we expect Dark Funeral to come toward the U.S.? Uh, if, if everything goes as planned this year, for sure. It's already in, in talk since uh, a long time. So uh, let, let's see when everything is, is finalized and ready to go official. But this, this year is the plan, for sure. Awesome. Uh, um, yeah. I just, you know, as I said before, you know, U.S. have been treating us so fucking good the last tours we've done. So uh, now we have a bigger uh, booking agents over there and uh, we have lots of plans for the U.S. in the next couple of years. So uh, we can't wait to come back. Awesome. So everybody, Lord Armand of Dark Funeral, we'll see you next time.